Hi, welcome back. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. So you're back here for your session on corporate finance. You're actually making really good progress, I must say that, uh, given that you've covered all the last you know, eight to ten sessions and you are really comfortable by now in the fundamentals of a company and fundamentals of how to analyze a company's uh, three financial statements. So you probably already realize if you work for a financial services company or if you, you probably do a finance role in a non-finance company, you probably already realize that you can better understand the decisions being made. You can also better understand your specific role uh, in, in a larger perspective on the impact on the company's uh, uh, balance sheet or income statement. What I'm going to do in this session is I'm going to take your already good understanding of corporate finance one step further and I'm going to expose you to the special kind of long-term investment a company makes called CapEx or capital expenditure. And I'm going to also walk you through how this expense item is treated slightly differently than your typical operating expenses on your income, in income statement. Now, I'm going to go back to a Domino's example, and the reason I keep going back to Domino's Pizza is that the, 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 you know, the, the goal is that by the end of this class, uh, you're really, really familiar with one company, which in our case is Domino's, so you can just dissect it you know, from like top to bottom. And once you can do that with one company, you will notice that it's fairly straightforward to do that with every, every other company. So back to our Domino's example. Now, you know, when... Domino's is going to be set up in a new country or maybe a new store is going to be set up. Domino's makes a lot of upfront investment in stores, furniture, interior decoration, baking ovens, refrigerators, you know, stocking go-downs, uh, inventory holding centers, a lot of these upfront expenses which are different from the expenses to make and sell the, make and sell the pizza, right? These are upfront expenses even before you actually start making the pizza. Now, the, the difference between these expenses is that the benefit of these expenses is felt over a long period of time. You buy an oven, oven this year, you're not going to throw it out next year and buy a new oven next year. You'll probably upgrade this oven in three years, but you'll probably keep the oven for like a couple of years, three, four, five years. Same, same thing to do with the furniture and, and, and things like that, right? Um, uh, so unless for whatever reason you're in the business of throwing out your furniture and uh, refrigerators every year, I don't know why you would do that. But, but yes, so such expenditure which have a long-term benefit for the company are typically what is called capex or capital expenditure. And the reason they are called capex or capital expenditure is because uh, they are what is called capitalized on the balance sheet. So this is the Domino's balance sheet that you're uh, already familiar with. We looked at it a couple of classes back. You see this first line item right there. It says gross block, right? That is essentially Domino's capitalized expenditure. That is essentially the investment Domino's has made in all these uh, uh, stuff I told you, the ovens, the refrigerators, the uh, furniture, and they have not added it as an as an expense on their income sheet that year itself and, and the reason they have not done that is the same logic we used a few classes back where we said on an income statement the expenses should match the revenue so if if you if you if they've added the let's say they bought an oven for 5 lakhs if they made the entire 5 lakh as an expense on the balance sheet that would mean that uh, that oven is not going to be used in the next year, but that's not true. You know that an oven is going to be used for for many many years. So they will divide the life, the, the value of the oven by the lifetime in which it's going to be used, and you know kind of use that expense across the lifetime. And we we will get to that. But essentially, Domino's capital expenditure or capex can be found in this line here called gross block. Yeah, and you know. Uh, that is one example of capital expenditure, and you know that the restaurant industry uh, is 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 kind of a capex intensive industry, but it may not be the most capex intensive. There are some industries like right here you go oil, the oil industry, right? It's it's immensely, hugely capex intensive. Before you can actually even start an oil oil project or an oil refinery, you probably have to like sink in like 500 crores or 600 crores um, for all these huge pipelines, uh, your refineries, you probably have to build a port to take your oil. And if you're drilling oil offshore, you probably have to 
pay advance to rent those huge oil rigs, helicopters, things like that. So setting up, so which is why every time you read about Mukesh Ambani and Reliance Industries, right, the Krishna Godavari Basin project and all that, the numbers thrown out are like 8,000 crores, 10,000 crores in CapEx investment before they actually see one rupee out of that project. So oil is a hugely capital, capital uh, CapEx intensive industry. Another example is right here, a car industry, yeah, a car industry. Imagine you want to start making cars, right? I mean, I, I don't even know where I would start. I don't even know what is the first thing I would spend on, right? You need this huge factory. You need to invest a lot into R&D, coming up with the design. You need to invest like hundreds of crores in robos uh, before the first car actually comes out of your line and this is one of the reasons why you never see startups you know a first-time entrepreneur you rarely see a first-time entrepreneur setting up an oil refinery or setting up a car factory even something like a car factory you know look at all the cars we have in India other than the Tata's which is you know arguably an Indian based company every other leading car company in India has got some kind of you know Japanese or Korean or American or German or Russian collaboration to it and a lot of times it's because of the technology involved and also because of the human the huge amounts of capex needed okay another example of this is the industry where Airtel and Vodafone and uh, you know Reliance Telecom are in telecom you need thousands of crores to buy spectrum from the government you need another thousands of crores to go buy, build towers like that you need an, another like few hundreds of crores to get your networking architecture infrastructure all that in place and all that is capex but just because these industries have huge capex does not mean they are bad businesses it just means that the value of these investment is going to be seen over a longer period of time and and how that is uh, essentially done is um, we're gonna look at that Okay, sorry. All right. So that is the capex of uh, Domino's. And then now you're probably wondering, what is this item here called depreciation? We briefly came upon, upon it about three sessions back, but then we said we'll discuss it later. We're going to discuss it now. Depreciation is how capital expenditure is expensed. Okay. Okay. Capital expense. Now, for example, all right, let's say, for example, this is a new oven that Domino's bought. Okay, let's say they bought this oven um, this year. Okay, and let's say after you know one year or two years of using the oven, this is how the oven looks like. You know, this looks like a used oven. This kind of looks like an unused oven, fresh oven, right? Then let's say after like five years or six years or ten years, you know, they they're using their ovens like crazy and it's all rusted and it's all gone. This is how it looks like. So this right from this new oven. To this old oven is the life cycle of this oven, life cycle of this asset. The, an, an oven is an asset to Domino's because Domino's owns the oven and the, you know the, the assets help a company make revenue. So an oven is an asset and the value of an asset decreases over time. And that's not news to you. Let's say if you bought a car today for three lakhs, you know, after one a brand new car, after one year, the, the value of that car is going to be maybe two and a half lakhs. After uh, five years, the value of that car is probably going to be one lakh. That essentially is what depreciation is, is that the value that companies realize that the value of a long term investment decreases over time. Right, this year it's ten thousand. Next year it's four thousand. Another year it's, it's uh, after a few years five hundred. So the expense in the income statement for a long term investment like capex is based on how many years an asset is going to produce revenues or earnings for the company. Okay, and just to give you a rough example on how that works is, uh, let us say here depreciation. All right. Um, hopefully you're becoming familiar with Excel as we go through these sessions That's the whole point of me building these things in front of you okay uh, so you know get used to uh, using Microsoft Excel uh, quite frequently uh, it, it's going to be immensely helpful so back to our depreciation so let's say in the let's say in the year 2011 okay and let's say 2012 and let's say 2013 
all right now uh, let's say in the year 2012 um, Domino's bought an oven oven okay oven is five lakhs okay this is not an expense yet this is just an event that happened in the year 2011 and the event is that Domino's essentially bought an oven which cost five lakhs okay now in normal cash accounting you would just use a five lakhs as an expense but we are corporate finance professionals we know that that should not be done what depreciation does is depreciation will figure out okay this oven can probably be used for three years maybe it's five years seven years the management and accountants will decide what that year is and then we will take the value of the oven divided by the number of years over which it is going to provide useful life uh, for the company and we will expense it that way so this oven expense this is a cap this is going to be in the balance sheet right here okay this is, is the balance sheet this is going to be a capital expense and on your income statement this this is going to be the expense on your income statement okay this is your capital expenditure capitalized expenditure on your balance sheet and the, the proportional thing is the uh, expense on income statement which is your depreciation but now what is going to happen to your balance sheet as you keep depreciating the value of this asset is in 2012 is your asset worth the same 5 lakhs no the value of the asset is, a, is the initial value 5 lakhs minus the value that it has lost the last year that is the new value of your asset okay and then next year that is the new value of your of your asset okay so and then you, you just keep depreciating the value of the asset until it roughly reaches zero. Now you see in the next year in 2014, well, I, the, the value of this asset in 2014 is going to be zero, right? Look at that now. That's it, zero. The value of the, the, the asset is useless after that, okay? Now depreciation is not just used for expenses made on new items. If you're also doing maintenance activities on existing items, like maybe in the third year you're spending 50,000 rupees doing some maintenance activities to increase the life of an oven, you will still capitalize that expenditure and you would depreciate it over a period of time. We're going to go back to this Domino's uh, balance sheet right here. And you saw that this line is the capital expenditure. This is their depreciation. And... If you go to Domino's income statement, right here you should see, right, there you go. You see something called depreciation and amortization. The depreciation of their fixed assets, their equipment is all there. And that is popularly called, uh, depreciation is popularly called a non-cash expense. And, and this is really important. The reason it is called a non-cash expense is if you look at your income statement you know raw material staff costs manufacturing costs finance charges all that stuff you're actually paying cash to incur all those expenses but depreciation is the only thing in this income statement where you're not actually paying cash in the financial period you've already paid cash a few years back it is just the residual value of that asset that is being treated as an expense when it goes to your financial statement which is why to, uh, to to get to your you know real recurring operating income people uh, or, or EBITDA people will generally add back uh, your depreciation uh, and amortization back to your um, uh, your operating income but before we do that we're gonna quickly go through what is amortization okay now depreciation is uh, expensing for long-term tangible assets by tangible assets I mean an oven of a, a furniture I can touch it I can feel it I can physically use it now amortization is the same concept of depreciation but you use it for intangible assets what's an intangible assets I'm going to give you an example now let's take this multi-billion dollar pharmaceutical company Pfizer okay an American based New York based company Pfizer now Pfizer is in the business of making tablets tonics medicines syringes you know needles injections and whatnot now let's say 
Pfizer invested $1 billion in research and development and R&D. And all of a sudden, they have come up with this wonder drug. Wow, it cures memory. Okay, Pfizer drug, this memory drug where you, you have two tablets a day and you can just remember everything. Okay, wonder drug. Pfizer has spent $1 billion doing it. Now, this $1 billion Pfizer spending making a drug is equivalent to, you know, Domino spending 50 crores buying a new oven. The only difference is, Domino in 50 hours to get ovens, you should touch feel the oven. What we do here? What's the asset here? The tests are not an asset. I mean, uh, you're making tablets, you're saying that way, that doesn't keep the tablets with it. What is an asset here? Is the copy or the patent trademark that the scientist has so many intellectual hours this product and you get a patent for it, uh, you know, a trademark based on you know, the, the legalities of the country they are in. So that it's in tap paid worth the dollars because the company has billion dollars making the product. The unfortunate is you can't touch a feel of it, it's just a paper. So amortize it is a way to Appreciate intangible asset, and that is as simple as what it is. So typically, what what they would do is they would say, okay, uh, patents for tablet for since are typically I think fifteen years, ten years, or what country are in. But let's just our easy calculation is for nine or ten years. So if, uh, I'm sorry, Pfizer will take the blue color they're making a phrase of. So Pfizer will probably take the billion dollars and say life and value this bit is ten years. I'm going to advertise one bill in ten equal monthly in yearly installments, hundred million dollars of patents every year on their income state. That says amortizing is. Hopefully that's clear. Uh, we're going to quickly also get the larger impact of amortization and depreciation. And the larger impact is that uh, investors look less in a company are generally not very concerned about depreciation and amortization. The reason for that is because investors are worried about cash, cash flow of the company. Depreciation and amortization, as we saw, are non cash expenses because just ex expensing the rest of the value of all the paid assets. You're not making any cash for that. Asset. So investors want to see what do the cash flows company look like without going into the business of depression and amortization. The only concern is if you spend too much money on your depreciation and amortization is way high, that means you've made a capital, capex investment. That better starting off your revenue growth going up, otherwise all your capex investment has been a waste of money. Okay. And typically what investors want to look at is the whole uh, line term money or income called EBITDA. Okay, you've heard of it. EBITDA is nothing but it's for earns before interest taxes you guess depreciation and amortization this is very important number to invest because gives the earnings of a company unfructed by like in tax and uh, interest which are non-operating expense and it's like depreciate which are non-cash expenses and this gives a fantastic health of the company now you're thinking are equipment only long-term cost of company? Maybe marketing expense probably long-term for company, right? Because I'm uh, you know, I probably went to those this year look marketing campaign. I keep going back to this for the next three, four years. So their marketing rupees they spent on me four years back is still worth them. So can't marketing cost be capitalized? A very smart question, but it really depends. It's a very thin line on me ethics if you can, you know, capitalize marketing costs or not. Uh, a lot of online shop companies get in trouble regulator capitalizing their market costs so that uh, you know, the affordability is higher, uh, but in some cases you can, in some cases you can't. It's really case by case scenario. Now, your understanding of the official statements is pretty complete. There's really more I can teach you. I'm not going to come back to you say what was special. Uh, in the next session, what you're going to do is we're going to just take everything learned in the last five sessions, all the financial statements, special case, actually walk through building what is called three model or more than a statement, a balance sheet, and a special statement. And then, listen, you can